Well, well, we have a big crowd tonight. Welcome. Um, we are coming out of a closed session, so the first thing I have to do is bring us back into an open meeting. So I move that the members of the county board certify that at the just concluded closed session, one, only public business matters lawfully exempted from open meeting requirements under Chapter 37, Title 2.2 of the Code of Virginia, and two, only such public business matters as were identified in the motion by which the closed meeting was convened were heard, discussed, or considered by the board. Um, we need a uh, roll call vote, please. Mr. Fassett? Aye. Ms. Crystal? Yes. Ms. Garvey? Yes. Mr. Vistat? Yes. And we'll get Mr. Dorsey's vote when he returns. All right, he'll be in any moment. Okay, and there he is. So, Mr. Dorsey, mm -hmm. how do you vote on the? Yeah. Uh, okay, got it. All right, um, we have uh, the first order of business or is discussion and uh, public testimony on the consent agenda items that were pulled from the agenda at Saturday's meeting. There are four items: 15, 26. 30 and 47. Madam Clerk, how many speakers do we have? 39. 39 speakers. This is a record. Um, so, 39 speakers. The, I believe you have a choice to speak for... They have three minutes. Uh, if you are speaking in public minutes. comment, you, have a, you can speak up to three minutes. If you add three minutes times three minutes times 39, that's about two hours. <laughs> about two hours. Um, so <laughs> um, uh, we also have then to take up each item and to have presentations on it and to talk about it. And then we have a regular agenda of four or five items later tonight, which are normally the larger items on the agenda that take more time. <laughs> um, so my uh, suggestion is if you're here and you're speaking on an item for which other people have already said, you know, uh, the range of views, you certainly have the ability or the right to use up your whole time and you can repeat everything you heard, or you can cut it short, or somebody can say, everybody agrees with me, please stand up. There are a lot of different options, honestly, but uh, just take into account that if everyone used their whole time tonight, you will all be here for at least, we will, two hours before we even get to talking about the first of the consent agenda items this evening. So to the degree you can uh, cut those, those, that time short from three minutes and be more concise, I think we'd all benefit. So with that, um, and the first two speakers, there'll be uh, two called up. The second person, the one next in line, please move toward the front of the room and sit here so that you're ready to just step up and uh, grab the microphone. So, Ms. Halleck, could you please call for us the first two speakers? Next speaker is Solis Duncan, followed by Esaias Lassan. I wanted to speak briefly on ECDC's use permit renewal. Thank you for the opportunity to share my perspective with you this evening. My name is Solis Duncan. I'm an Arlington resident and a member of the ECDC community. I would like to briefly impress upon you the importance of ECDC as a meeting place and as a convening place for the Arlington community. I have personally been a part of at least two instances in the past year when ECDC has acted as a vital community meeting place. We held a very popular community forum in the days following the announcement of the travel ban, for instance. We gathered young and old Arlington residents to talk about how the ban affects our community. It was a time for reflection, planning, and strength as an inclusive multicultural community. I support ECDC continuing to play this important role in the community as a place where neighbors convene to strengthen the values that make Arlington great. Thank you. Our next speaker <clears throat> is Esaias Lassan, followed by Erica Long. Welcome. Thank you, distinguished the Members of the board, it's an honor to speak with you with regard to ECDC's uh, permit. Uh, ECDC contribution for the community is really worthwhile. My name is Isaias Lissanu. I'm uh, by profession, I'm a journalist and a publisher, and I'm also executive director for the Ethiopian uh, Community Radio. 
um, and here I am testifying with regard to ECDC. Our organization also has a weekly radio program uh, which broadcast on Sunday to the Ethiopian community in the DMV area. We also have uh, an office in the ECDC facility and at the same time also ECDC provide us a hall for a poetry reading for monthly and um, uh, our ECDC is our epicenter to the, the Ethiopian community and also the immigrant community. And uh, I would like to the county board to understand how important um, ECDC is only not only for our community, but also uh, for the immigrant community for our, the, our for this nation. And in addition to that, I know in my heart this great country will continue to assist organizations such as like ECDC. Uh, last but not least, I want to thank Dr. Tafara for his extraordinary service and his leadership. And I hope the board understand and approve their permits. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker. Thank you very much. Our next speaker is Molly Calkin, followed by Martin Goldstein. Welcome. Good evening. I'm Molly Calkins, uh, speaking on behalf of Arlington Heights Civic Association about item number 15, the renewal of the use permit for the ECDC owned building. Six years, for six years, residents on the residential street where ECDC's office building sits have lived with the nightmare of events held there. Event goers block neighbors' driveways, they use their driveways as pickup and drop off spots, and they cause an array of noise and disturbance. The Civic Association opposes renewal of the use permit. For six years, neighbors have met with and worked with the ECDC, but the problems persist. Neighbors are tired of the noise and having their driveways blocked. They're tired of sleep disturbance and they're tired of getting jerked around by process. These neighbors have engaged with ECDC in the county. They've jumped through every hoop that county authorities have asked them to. They've met with ECDC, they've met with county staff, they've met with the police, they've documented the heck out of these problems. They've called the police about parking violations and noise disturbance. They've confronted event goers to ask them to quiet down and move their cars. They can't possibly have done more in their effort to fix these problems. The county is responsible for enforcing permit conditions, but it seems the county has shifted that burden to the residents. You've each seen the long trail of correspondence, the photos, the videos about problems at these events dating back to 2011. You've heard from the police, you've heard from county staff, why has this particular organization gotten away with violations for all these years? It says, oh, it's a public street. We can't control what happens on a public street. But make no mistake, ECDC has an affirmative duty to control how its event goers behave. That is spelled out in the permit conditions. And it has been for years. The use permit is conditioned on adequate noise and parking management, and adding conditions now will not solve the problems because ECDC already ignores the existing conditions. It doesn't know how to be a good neighbor, and it's demonstrated an unwillingness to learn. Thanks. Our next speaker is Martin Goldstein, followed by Nick Sanders. Martin Goldstein is working tonight out of town and authorized me to speak on his behalf. If I may, a few excerpts from what he submitted. Um, you can't, yeah, you can't do that. You've just spoken, so you can't speak on his behalf. You have his written statement, correct? He can, he can we do have his written statement. We do have his written statement. Very good, thank you. Very good. <coughs> Our next speaker is Nick Sanders, followed by Melanie Myers. Okay, Melanie Myers followed by Chris Gordon. Welcome. Hello, um, I feel kind of like a broken record up here. Um, tonight, um, as you said, a bunch of my neighbors are working, um, so I'm kind of speaking for them tonight. Molly said a lot, um, more than I need to say. Um, but yeah, these issues have been going on for quite a while and we've done everything we've been asked to. 
Um, mm -hmm. and, and I understand the ECDC plays a vital role in the community and I don't doubt that. Um, and, but we live there 24 seven, 365 days a year um, and we can't get away from it. Um, one of my neighbors right now is working um, for DOT at Crisis Management Center for um, hurricane monitoring. Another is a law enforcement officer who have to serve, he has to serve warrants early in the morning. Uh, another can't be here tonight because he's working as a critical care nurse. Uh, another nurse has two small children and she's gotta turn around and get up early. So I'm talking for them right now. Um, but what I, things that I'm concerned about is, um, you know, with the, the ECDC keeps getting terms, they're not met, and then they're watered down, and this is like a perpetual cycle. Um, you know, parties, like they originally were allowed to go on until 11 or 11.30. Well, not only did they listen to our concerns, they let them go later, and now things are going on, you know, between the cleanup and the music, it's going on much later. Um, one of the things that I'm really concerned about is, is the traffic. Um, again, so I've come home late at night, people have just left their cars in my driveway because they're inside of a party um, at the ECDC. Um, we have cars making U-turns in our driveways. We have, right now we've got five small children just in the block in front of me. They're playing out front and you have s lanes are blocked and people can't get by and it's a dangerous traffic situation. Um, and additionally, like every time I call, you know, I keep, we keep, they keep saying call, call, call. Well, if it's before nine o'clock, I get told don't call until after nine o'clock. Well, well, what do I do? I, so all of these terms and stipulations are, they're, the burden of proof is on us and we've done our best. I've taken videos, whatever, and, and nothing gets done. I Thank you. Our next speaker is next we speaker is Radiate Johan Johannes, followed by Catherine Kuhan. Welcome. Hello everyone. Um, my name is Radiate Johannes, a resident of Arlington County and part of the Ethiopian community development family uh, serving immigrant in the community. As resident of the lovely Arlington County, my home for over a year now, I, want, I just wanted to say a few words why I believe this board should renew the license for the community center. Uh, you all know a lot about the services the, co the, the community center provides uh, to the immigrant community and in general to the whole um, Arlington community. So I just wanted to make a point that in addition to the services we provide refugees to integrate into the community. Uh, this center provides a place where family can gather in times of um, happy occasions like uh, baptisms, uh, birthdays, weddings, and as such. And in time to be there for one another in times of uh, hardship, like funeral receptions are held in the center. Um, considering the communal uh, family and communal um, lifestyle of the refugee, the African community that we serve, it is part, I consider it to be part of the service because the community needs a place to gather. Uh, most of the refugees and the immigrants, they have confined places, like they need a place where they can gather together and exchange ideas that would speed up the process of them becoming an integral and productive part of the community. So. It also provides families and their young ones a place to gather, which prevents young ones from going to places, bad places where they will be influenced in the wrong way. So for instance, for the Ecotopian community, when the community gathers, it provides the young ones a chance to relate to their uh, heritage and a place where they can learn about their history and their culture and help them from going to bad places where they will be influenced uh, in a negative way, uh, which is a very high concern for the immigrant families, for immigrant parents to keep their family, um, for the young ones to be not detached from their heritage and detached from who they are, basically. So it provides that place, that um, center, so 
I, I ask you to consider to renew the license. Thank you. Thank and you. Um, at the end, I just want to, the other people who came and could not be speaking tonight, so to show them their support. I see a few signs. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Catherine Kuhain, followed by Habt Michael. All right, good evening. Uh, I am a new member, uh, I'm a new Arlington resident who has been a member of this community for only six months. Uh, however, in my six months of residency, I have attended block parties, uh, farmers markets, I've already voted in Arlington and I've been working in Arlington County. As a transplant from Minnesota, I have found a community in Arlington and I understand the necessity of community spaces which is why I'm here today in support of the ECDC use permit uh, for educational and community uses. So having a safe space to gather fosters a sense of belonging and investment into the, the community. Arlington, uh, as I've recently found, is an odd mix of suburban and urban area, as we've heard tonight. Um, and so every, every space feels very precious. Uh, I have found that Arlington is a place that welcomes their neighbors and I believe that we must come together to support diverse community-based organizations. And again, I really believe that this organization is a community-based organization that are using these precious spaces to build community. Speaking as a new Arlington resident, uh, I am here to express community unity while listening to our neighbors' concerns. I hope that Arlington continues to be a community that values diverse community-based organizations, fosters understanding between communities, and continues to work together to allow for the use of their space. Thank you very much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Hopt Michael, followed by Betty Helton. Welcome. Good evening. Good evening. I'm Hopte Michael. Uh, this is the third time coming here. I'm meeting you all. Um, I'm here on behalf of ECDC's uh, use permit. Uh, you've heard from my colleagues, and uh, I want to make some, a few points, not repeating what they said. Events are always held within our building. We've installed soundproof, and it's been inspected by the county uh, inspector at a cost of almost $40,000. Event goers are always been encouraged and advised to be considerate of the neighborhood peace at all times. Two and more at times up to five, ECD staff members have always actually wearing bright uh, highlighted vests outside directing traffic. Event goers that park in the garage are encouraged to pass through the back of the building and use our spaces. In addition, I want to add and uh, remind or inform you that uh, South Highland Street in front of ECDC is a metered parking. Making a left, uh, right, there are about 20 to 25 spaces that are metered and free parking after 6 p.m. <coughs> Communications. In a meeting with the county, uh, member and residents uh, that was held in e at ECDC, we've given people our phone numbers, including cell phones, emails, and on a day-to-day -day basis, especially when there are events, neighbors do see us over there. <coughs> Most of the event goers do park in the garage. Event planners, when they book events, we always give them uh, directionals of uh, where to get their liquor license if they're serving any liquor. They sign a contract where it clearly states the time of uh, uh, event ending time. And we always encourage them to usually be peaceful when they leave the events. This is what happens. and. In the future, wherever needs to improve, we will improve. 
Thank you. Thank you. Seems like you've had the last word there. I, is that the end of the? This is the end. All right, very good. Well, what we will do now um, is walk through each of the consent agenda items in order. So, um, Ms. Halleck, if you could call the first item, please. The first item is number 15. It's a use permit review for education and community building uses, ECDC at 901 and 903 South Highland Street and 3045 Columbia Pike. Thank you. I'll turn to the county manager for a report on this one. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, with me this evening to make a presentation is Matt Pfeiffer of CPHD, assisted by Captain Quigley of the Arlington County Police Department. Thank you, Mr. Manager. Mr. Chairman, members of the county board, my name is Matt Pfeiffer with the Planning Division. Uh, the item we're discussing today is U3304111 Ethiopian Community Development Council. This is a one-year review. Next slide, please. The site is located uh, at, on the east side of South Highland Street at the intersection of Columbia Pike. Um, the addresses are 901 and 903 South Highland Street and 3045 Columbia Pike. Next slide. The site is identified on the general land use plan as service commercial and the site is zoned C2. Next slide. A little bit of background, this use permit was approved in 2011. Uh, the uses permitted are educational and community center uses and community events, which include uh, events such as wedding receptions, parties, religious ceremonies, poetry readings, um, and things of that nature. Community events are currently permitted Mondays through Thursdays until 10 p.m., Fridays and Saturdays, and Sundays on the eve of holidays, 11 a.m. to 12 a.m., um, and then on regular Sundays, 11 a.m. to 10 p.m. Next slide. So a little bit of background um, about these buildings. Uh, ECDC owns these buildings. Um, the ECDC use permit allows for, uh, the, the 901 building is approximately 30,000 square feet. ECDC use permit is to use about 8,600 square feet on the first and third floors uh, for their educational uses and then uh, approximately 2,000 square feet for community events on the first floor. The remainder of that building um, is is uh, by right office uses. Um, and in the 903 uh, South Highland Street building as well, it's about a 40,000 square foot building. Um, ECDC use permit allows for 3,700 approximately square foot hall uh, to be used for community events. The remainder of the space again is by right office uh, and retail uses. Uh, so the next series of slides, um, I wanted to give the board um, as much context as possible about this use permit. This has been reviewed several times. Um, we've heard the same issues kind of over and over again, so I wanted to give the board some uh, pretty detailed information about the history of this use permit. So the next couple of slides will do that. Um, in 2011, the board approved this use permit. Um, there were five conditions attached to that. Uh, generally, those conditions were the community events were defined, so what are those events? Um, hours were provided. Um, condition number three provided that the events have to take place within the building um, and uh, the events must comply with the noise ordinance. Condition four was that um, the events must, uh, ECDC must provide security for all events. Um, and then the last condition was that they establish a neighborhood liaison to communicate uh, with the neighborhood for any problems. Uh, the use permit was reviewed uh, six months later in March. No, no issues were uh, identified at that time and no new conditions were approved. Um, in a, there, it was renewed for a year and in March 2013, uh, that's when we started hearing concerns from neighbors about parking and about um, noise impacts coming from the use. Um, however, at that time, no uh, use permit or code violations were identified and the use permit was renewed for three years. Next slide. So in the March 2016 review um, was when we started uh, noticing uh, a number of issues with the use permit. There was a violation of the condition number two regarding events running past their scheduled times. Um, there were 31 police calls for service um, over the past year. So this was a three year review and those 31 calls were recorded in the year previous. Um, there were fire code issues um, and at that time uh, the board approved several new conditions, one of which was to require um, a soundproofing plan um, and that there be two ECDC security personnel at each event um, and then also that the uh, applicant hand out flyers to all event goers um, talking about parking infractions. Next slide. Um, in the September 2016 review, there was a marked improvement. 
Um, there was one noise complaint received and investigated, but there were no violations identified. The soundproofing at that time was not installed. Um, however, this was just due to the normal uh, review time associated with permitting, so we, we didn't uh, identify that as a major problem. There were 12 police calls for service. That was, again, a six-month period of time, um, and we heard the same general um, complaints from neighbors. Next slide. So this brings us to the current review cycle. So this was, uh, to be clear, this review cycle is between September 2016 and the present September 2017. Um, since that time, soundproofing has been installed. Um, also, uh, the county did install some new signs on South Highland Street, uh, just delineating where those driveways are and where folks can and can't park. Um, we did identify one violation of the noise ordinance, and this uh, was also a violation of condition three, which says you have to comply with the noise ordinance. Um, this, this was due to an event that occurred in, in late August. Um, there were 17 police calls for service over the previous year, um, but there were no additional code or fire marshal issues or ABC issues. Next slide. Uh, so this slide uh, shows you a little bit of a breakdown about the police calls for service that we received during the, the last review period. Um, as you can see, the, the shaded, the beige shaded um, columns or, or rows, excuse me, um, are calls that occurred during ECDC event times. Um, and as you can see, there, there really is not a very strong correlation between ECDC events and parking calls. There, there seem to be for the noise calls, but not for the parking. Next slide. So um, some staff analysis. We, we have seen some improvement in performance over the last year. Um, it's unclear, as I said, whether there is a, a strong correlation between ECDC events and parking calls. There were fewer parking calls received after the no parking signs were installed. Um, and there was only one uh, call received for loud music um, after the soundproofing was installed. Uh, we still think that there is room for improvement in managing crowds. Most of the noise impacts seem to be from crowds leaving events. Um, and we did receive at least three calls for that. Um, and so what we're recommending is that there be closer coordination between ECDC and the police department. Uh, so we are recommending uh, a amendment to condition number four. Um, ECDC security uh, staff should um, attend public safety training with the police department. Uh, they currently run a program in Clarendon, the police, um, and they are going to work with ECDC to train their staff to help them manage crowds in a better way. Um, condition number five, uh, ECDC would be required to share their schedule of events with the police department on a quarterly basis, and they can transmit that schedule uh, through email. Next slide, please. Um, so as, as I mentioned, um, and as you heard in public testimony tonight, um, uh, neighbors living in the duplexes on the west side of South Highland Street continue to express concerns about Ill illegal parking and disruption on South Highland Street um, and noise impacts from music and from event goers leaving events. The Arlington Heights Civic Association does recommend revoking the use permit due to these issues. Um, there was a, a, a meeting held on September 6th with the police department and, and some of these neighbors. Um, and at that time, the police did outline their protocol for reporting events and what to do in those type of scenarios. Next slide. <coughs> Staff is recommending renewing the use permit subject to all previous, previously approved conditions with two amended conditions with administrative review in one year and a county board review in three years. Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. That's the end of the presentation. Uh, the applicant is here, which you like to say something? It's on now, Barnes. It's on. Nope, now it's off. Now it's on. Oh, it's not lighting up. Yeah, we can see the light. You can Okay, can't. I see it. Um, for the record, my name is Barnes Lawson, Jr. I represent the applicant. Um, one of the things I, I, I had done was a list of all the things that uh, the applicant has done to address the uh, complaints from the neighbors. Uh, I'm going to hand this to you when I get done speaking. Uh, two things I want to point out is um, in the agreement that, that anybody who, who is using the space uh, has to sign is a statement. It says, it is understood and agreed that should your group fail to adhere to all rules, policies, and conform to the proper use of the building, the Highland Holding Associates may at, at its discretion terminate this agreement and require the renting parties 
to vacate the building uh, during the event if necessary. So anybody who, who comes here, uh, they understand they have to comply with this. Um, another thing that they have done, and they've done this in several languages, is uh, event organizers are handed flyers that they can distribute to their attendees in three languages requesting that they respect the peace of the neighborhood and the parking. So that everybody who uses this is, is made aware of it. Uh, like I say, I will hand this out to you uh, when I get done uh, speaking. Uh, the second thing is, um, and I've been doing this for a while, and you know, you do the best you can, but nobody can control absolutely what a third party does. Um, I can remember many years ago on a use permit for Kirby's Dodge, one of the conditions was there'd be no test driving vehicles in neighborhoods. We wrote out a statement, the employees would sign it, I will never test drive a vehicle in the neighborhood. Two days later, we get a complaint from Monica Craven, they're test driving in the neighborhood. Uh, you know, so we, we, do, we do everything we can, but we can't control every action by a third party. Um, the training by the police um, is an excellent idea. We've got such a terrific police department and um, th there are, there's training that's now being done on how to de-escalate confrontations. And uh, you know, I think that's very important because sometimes it, it appears that, that um, a confrontation uh, is, is, is happening and uh, training on how to de-escalate that I think is, is gonna be very helpful. Uh, the applicant has asked the Civic Association to come and make a presentation and so far uh, that offer has not been accepted. And uh, we recently did a, uh, um, uh, had a case that involved a pipe stem lot and the staff uh, kind of mediated that between uh, the neighbors and the applicant and it could be that that's something that uh, might want to be considered again. Uh, Dr. Tafara would like to now say a couple words. John. Members of the board and Mr. County Manager, Thank you for the opportunity to come before you and present uh, our application. When I was sitting here listening to the president of the Civic Association, I was not sure if she was describing the ACDC and me that I know or an organization that I don't know. So for the record, I would like to state a few facts. ACDC has been a part of this community for the last 32 years, going on our 30 years. I have been a resident of Arlington for the last 42 years. A community member in the South Arlington area, except for one year I lived in North Arlington. I participate in many of the civic affairs in the county. <coughs> I am a citizen of the United States. I became a US citizen by choice. I became an Arlington resident by choice because Arlington is a multicultural welcoming community. ACDC has been here it was born in Arlington, grew up in Arlington, matured in Arlington. We own properties, we hire people. We have over 50 employees in our payroll in the Arlington office. Nationally, we have over 100 people working for us. We pay taxes here. We pay property taxes, we pay personal taxes. So we are part and parcel of this community. So to give a picture that ECDC is a not caring, a not concerned organization, and the community that it serves, and the people that work with us, for us, is not a fair statement. Therefore, I want the record to show that 
we are part and parcel of this community. I have tried to reach out to the Civic Association. We became even members of the Civic Association. We have never been invited. I have, as of today. <coughs> now, when the president of the association said she represents the Civic Association, I am a member of the association, and of course she doesn't speak for me, for the people that work for me. I have, I think we have received petitions from over 300 people. Many of them are residents of Columbia Pike, South Highland Street, Irving Street, Ninth Street. I hope some of these people are also members of the Civic Association. And what was said tonight does not represent them, I am sure. <coughs> Arlington is a community that is welcoming newcomers. We like it, that's why we are here. If I was to be concerned by the statement that was given tonight, I would have been scared, you know, to live in Arlington. But Arlington is a diverse community. There are different opinions. One of the signs as we were conversing the streets on Highland Street, the, there is a sign, it says, no matter where you are, from where you are, we are glad you are our neighbor. That is the Arlington that I know. Also, in the vision of Arlington County, <coughs> if I may allow, I would like to read that. Arlington will be a diverse and inclusive world-class urban community with secure, attractive residential and commercial neighborhoods where people unite for a caring, learning, participating, sustainable community in which each person is important. Dr. Tafara, the vision. Uh, uh, thank I you very much. I'm gonna ask you to try to tie it up so we can get I to will. the... So <laughs> having established to know who I am, who we are as an organization, and what we subscribe to, I think we have done everything possible to comply with the conditions that were set. As you look at the chart that was given to you, there were so many calls, but there were only two calls that has to do with ECDC, out of the many, many calls. So we're not expected to monitor South Highland Street. This is a public street. We can only control, you know, the occasions that we have control of. So we have done a lot of improvement. Does it mean, you know, we are 100% <coughs> perfect? I can assure you, we are not. There may be some need for improvements and so on. But also what I want to really bring to your attention is one of the persons that send you a statement doesn't live in that neighborhood. He used to live five years ago. So is he going back to his memory of five years or is he a witness to what is happening right now? <coughs> that is what I want to bring to your attention. You also have in your package from what I saw, emails that goes back to 2011. These are old issues. We have addressed them through the various amendments that have come before you. So I want to say, you know, we would like to be a good neighbor to our neighbors. We would like to be part of that process. We invite them to be also part of us. And uh, with that, I would like the board, basic, we accept the recommendations that have been suggested. In fact, one of them is very important. The fact that we have to tell the police of our events, it is for our protection. As what I have observed in some of the uh, emails, 
there are calls for violence, standing your ground. So having the police be present with us is in our protection, therefore we would welcome that. Finally, I want to really thank the staff. They have worked closely with us. They have monitored our activities and uh, I really thank them. They, I know they are put in a very, very difficult situation, but that is part of the duty. I want to be on record to thank them for their impartiality. All thank right, you. Thank you very time. much. Uh, the discussion is here now with the board. Um, let me just say one or two things I'm gonna turn to Ms. Garvey, just to recognize, I, I, I don't, uh, anyone that knows ECDC, neighbors included, I am sure, uh, recognize the value of the organization, the Ethiopian Community Development Council to, to the county, to the region. Um, it, it really does, it is a wonderful organization. That said, we are obviously talking about not the value of the organization, uh, but just to the uh, practical issues of how a use permit is being applied and whether or not there are issues flowing over into the neighborhood that need to be mitigated or not, and trying to get a better sense of what the practical reality is on the ground when some of those events occur. And, and we've been through this before. We've had, um, it's come before us as that requirement or request was made. And at different points with different input from neighbors, we've uh, provided some different conditions uh, to both uh, mitigate uh, what may have been some impacts and also to, as you said, make it easier for the applicant and uh, protect them in the process as well. So it can work both ways. One of the challenges here no question about it, is this happens to be a street that divides a, com uh, a commercial C2 zone, and on the other side of the street, it's a single family home residential. So on the ones, you don't see that a lot, right? One side of the street, there's single family homes as you approach Columbia Pike, and on the other side of the street, it's a multifamily four or five story building that's commercially zoned. So you inevitably have some opportunity here for, um, you know, impact uh, one to the other. Uh, to get this started, I think we probably will have some questions among us uh, from the board members, but Ms. Garvey, if you're ready to put a motion forward to begin the conversation. Sure, I'm happy to go ahead and make, make a motion. I move that we renew the subject use permit, subject to all previously approved conditions and two new amended conditions, uh, conditions four and five, with an administrative review in one year, uh, September 2018 and a county board review in three years, September of 2020. Second. Seconded, I will say, with by Mr. Dorsey. Is this, uh, this is the manager's recommendation you It is, forward. yes, it's okay. the manager's recommendation. So um, maybe just to start out, I'll ask the first question and go to my, Mr. Dorsey next, is uh, the issues raised by the neighborhood, by the Civic Association actually, in particular, the Civic Association president was here today and, and of course we, our civic associations and oftentimes they are a voice for the neighborhood. Um, w how, when did you hear, uh, how do you um, interpret some of the concerns that have been raised uh, by the neighborhood civic association and the president? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, no doubt we, we take those concerns very seriously um, and, and no doubt that there have been some impacts, um, but when evaluating the use permit, we really have to rely on the data that we get from our various re review agencies. We have to review, rely on the data that we get from the police department, from the zoning office, um, and the fact of the matter is the data bears out, um, you know, I think our, our recommendation. Um, and again, while we take the concerns of the, the Civic Association extremely seriously, um, you know, I think when we look at the data, some of the impacts perhaps that they have been observing um, may or may not be directly related to the use permit uses that ECDC um, is operating. In other words, some of them, and if you wanna put that table up on the screen, I don't know if that's useful right now or not. I think that's what you're referencing. Correct. To capture the calls for service since the last time the use permit was approved. And there are, I don't know, was it 15 or so? And yeah. when you actually look at what the uh, concern was that was called into the police department and all, the ability to either validate, we know that a call doesn't always e equal a violation and sometimes it does, but you can't prove it. So it's a little vague sometimes, but we have to go with what you can validate. You validated one. And then could you discuss just why some of the rest of these were more problematic than others? Sure, uh, thank you. So, um, 
when we when we say we validated one, that's when we we found that there was an actual violation of either a code or a condition. In this case, um, this this incident occurred on August 26th, um, and the police did observe a violation of the noise ordinance, which was also a violation of uh, condition number three. So they did receive notice of violation for that. Now, when evaluating the impact, we have to look at the calls, when the calls were received, and were, was ECDC operating a community event at that time? And if we look at um, out of, I think there were 10 parking calls received, um, uh, comparing that to the ECDC schedule events, it looks like only two occurred during ECDC events. Um, now when we look at the, loud, the four loud noise calls, um, they all did occur during ECDC events. So if we're evaluating parking, um, there, there appears to be less of a correlation than there did with the noise impacts. Can I just open it up to my colleagues? Mr. Dorsey, I'd said I'd go to you first. I assume you want to, if, if you're you know, able to talk about this and we can put this aside, this, this particular line of, of discussion. No, I'd actually like to continue it. So as we look at this chart that's on the screen here, uh, Mr. Pfeiffer, can you, uh, can you let me know how we ascertain that these calls for service are related to ECDC? I, again, we, we, were, we were looking for the calls for service um, and then comparing them as to when ECDC was having these events. Oh, ECDC, I, underst I understand, yeah. but how do we even determine in the first place that they're related to ECDC? Yeah, that's, that's, a, that's somewhat of a judgment call, I would say. We, we don't know for a fact unless we look at police reports, and um, you know, I, I'm not sure that we have police reports for every single one of these calls. Sure. Mr. Dorsey, if I can try to answer your question. For the parking complaints, it's very difficult because it's within the 900 block, so I can't guarantee which ones are or which ones aren't. For the loud noise complaints, based on the reporting party information and the information given in the call notes, it was related to ECDC. Okay, thank you. So uh, if you could break down either among parking and among noise, tell me how many of these calls, how many different people we had reporting those calls? Um, all that, well, for the loud complaints, uh, it's actually, I believe every party, reporting party that we had was listed as a speaker here today. It's the same four or five people that I believe are most adversely affected by the um, building across the street. Uh, as for the parking complaints, I remember one name specifically, but not always do they give their name. A lot of times they'll say, well, for the parking complaints, they just call about a parking park car. That's why I can't verify which one would be ECDC or not. For the loud complaints, they will say something to the effect of, crowds are gathering outside of the 901 Highland ECDC causing the disturbance kind of thing. Okay. Um, so if I could uh, ask maybe Dr. Tefera, Mr. Lawson, so I, I think I remember when we did this a year ago, we talked about there being a plan for circulating people from the interior to the parking garage, trying to minima minimize some of these impacts on the street. Can you give us a sense of how that's going? It's going very well. We have uh, used that technique. Instead, for the 901 South Highland, everybody goes through the garage and then through the back door. When it occurs on 903 South Highland, we have also used the garage to go through the alley towards the back door. Sometimes what happens is as people leave who have their cars parked elsewhere, they go out through the front. I also want to mention the loud noise that we have listed on, Feb on uh, August 26. The calls were at 1036, 1048. There was a cultural show taking place. We had a fire alarm in the building, a false fire alarm. So people have to go out the staff led, you know, every user to go out to the street. So as people were congregating on the street, the neighbor took the liberty to take a video. They have been circulating that on YouTube and everywhere. Well, what are we supposed to do if there is a fire? I'm glad you went outside, yes. first of all. And then as soon as the fire department determined that there was no fire, then everybody was let inside the building. Thank you, and then my last question, and uh, you know, I don't think we're gonna be able to really get to any fact here, um, just put that out there, but you know, somehow we have these 
dueling narratives where apparently uh, neighbors say that there are no people who are responsible parties outside as per required in the use permit, designated in security vests or otherwise visible. You say they are. I just point, put that out as something that we really can't adjudicate here, but uh, I, I want to have some closing comments. That, that concludes my questions at this time. Okay, Mr. Vice. Thank you. So in, in so many of these circumstances, not just here, but in other communities, um, communication is critical. It's key, especially communication between an applicant, a business, and the neighborhood through their civic association. And sometimes you can read somebody's body language, and when the assertion was made that Dr. Shafara, and, and by the way, I look forward to the next Ethiopian Thanksgiving this fall at ECDC, a great event uh, with a great organization. Um, you had indicated that uh, you made an offer to the Civic Association to present or, or for you to come present to them, um, and that, that offer apparently has not been consummated. Is there some way that we can broker that meeting so that folks from the neighborhood organization and ECDC can sit down and have a heart-to-heart heart -heart conversation about some of these issues? In fact, I would welcome that, and we look forward to that happening because I believe in communication. I have tried one call, and I was rebuffed. I have not tried again, but we went ahead and became members of the association for the last two years, paying our dues. Okay, well, I would hope that the Civic Association would take you up on your offer and and have have that meeting in the in the very near future, and it, and if if um, if staff might want to be there as well, uh, so it's a, a three way uh, dialogue that might be productive. Thank you. All right, thank you. Let's go. Um, excuse me. Sorry, um, Ms. Calkins. Please have a seat, Ms. Calkins. Thank you very much. Please, thank you. Y you really can't stand up in the room and just talk. It's not appropriate. It's not appropriate. Thank you very much, Ms. I, you know, I actually think Mr. Dorsey did an excellent job of asking some of the questions. I wanted to ask about the patterns here. I, you know, I think it's particularly given the length of the rest of our docket, probably well time to move on and, um, you know, do appreciate uh, sustained neighborhood concerns. But I think our staff, certainly ACPD, have provided us extensive data. Um, ECDC has shown us extensive data. Uh, this is an issue that we know, that I know, as someone who lives relatively nearby. Um, is a, there's a divided share of responsibility for all of us as a community because a lot of the parking issues that we see, the noise issues we see, um, come from establishments up and down Columbia Pike. So um, I am uh, very prepared to support the motion and didn't want to let the opportunity to go by without acknowledging the many speakers um, and underscoring uh, for me as well, how much value that we place on having this use in our neighborhood, and we look forward to continuing to work with you um, to make sure that uh, these uses can continue in um, ways that feel fully integrated with the neighborhood, because we know that's been uh, a wonderful part of your mission for 32 years. Yeah, and I'll just be really quick, just to echo what everybody else said in, in essence. Um, you know, you got different cultures. Communication can be especially difficult. Um, I spent some time, I lived in Africa for two and a half years. Um, I find different cultures fascinating, and once you, and you can easily, I've learned, have misunderstandings. So I second um, Mr. Weistat's uh, praise of the Thanksgiving that you hold. I think that's great. I would like to encourage anybody in the neighborhood to at least go to the Thanksgiving. We'll be there. Um, it's a little different from the Thanksgivings you're used to, but it's really cool. And uh, I hope we can continue to work this through, which I think you're willing to do. It's never going to be easy to be with a commercial area and homes right next to each other. I don't care who's there. It's going to be hard to do. But the more people can get to know each other a little bit as people and a little bit better understanding, I think the better we will do and it will strengthen the community. So thank you. And thank you for all you do. Thanks. Thank you. Mr. Dorsey. Thank you. I think uh, Ms. Colhane, I don't know if she's still here. She was one of our speakers on the issue, and I think she described it very well, talking about in our suburban urban community, there is competition for limited space. That competition often manifests itself in everybody wanting to lay claim to their piece of it to own it. But we, we don't have that luxury. We have to share it. And the board can't always be in the position of adjudicating every single dispute. We have to have our community 
work it out. And this is one of those cases where this is something that can and needs to be worked out. It's not that the board is going to revoke ECDC's permit. They provide tremendous value to our community. It's clear from the record that they have tried to work with compliance on conditions. I'm not here and in a position to say that it always works perfectly, but guess what? We can work it out. So let's do so, and I'm prepared to support the motion. Thank you. Alex, the motion is before the board. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Opposed? Carries 5-0. Thank you very much. Thank you. Well, the next item, please. The next item is number 26. It's a use permit for a child care center with up to